Today we're going to talk about how China's economic growth could affect the US in a number of ways. Let's talk about the electric vehicle industry. We all know that the US is trying to shift towards more sustainable energy sources. You see trillions of dollars going in that direction. And electric vehicles are certainly a big part of that. But did you know that a lot of the lithium used to make the batteries for those vehicles comes from China? If there are disruptions in the supply chain, it could be really bad news for the US electric vehicle industry. And that's why you see companies like Tesla thinking about actually doing their own mining. Another way that China's energy demands could affect the US is through global energy prices. If China's economy continues to grow and they need more energy to power it, that could drive up energy prices all over the world, including the US. And we'll talk about that specifically as it relates to oil, as well as natural gas. Europe, pay attention to that. This could make it more expensive for us to heat our homes, run our businesses, and power our cars. Let's talk about the ripple effects of disruptions and the critical supply chains. Lithium is just one example, but there are many other materials that the US relies on China for. If there are problems with the supply chain, it could have a domino effect throughout the economy. We saw that back in 2020, and those are still persisting today in many cases. For example, if a factory can't get the materials that it needs to make products, it might have to shut down, which could lead to job losses and reduced economic activity. And then, of course, we need to talk about the geopolitical issues that involve China. You know what's happening between the tensions, the US and China as it relates to Taiwan. What about Russia and Ukraine? That's still happening. These tensions could spill over into the economy, potentially leading to trade restrictions, higher tariffs and other economic impacts. All of that will be discussed in this video. So let's begin right here. We had the lockdowns, we had energy demand explosion. What is going to happen as China reopens? That's what this article is all about. A lot of stuff in here. And I just wanted to quote a few things. What I wanted to note was back in the introduction, I mentioned it. If China's reopening, they're pulling more demand. They're going to take a lot of the resources of the world. And they have been doing deals with Qatar with Saudi and they're saying we want your energy and that puts strain on those suppliers because if China's willing to say I'm going to do a 30 year deal with you and I'm going to send you trillion billions and trillions of dollars over the next decades that's a really good partnership. So here we are looking at this. For me, the biggest answer to the energy markets in the next months is going to come from China. China's economy is rebounding now. How strong this advantage will be uh, will decide the oil and gas market dynamics. If it's a very strong rebound, there may be a need that oil producers will increase their production. Of course, if they don't increase their production, then you have a higher price that's going to occur. In, you know, whether it's uh, natural gas, whether it's cement, whether it's copper, whatever the case may be, if they're not going to mine it, if they're not going to refine it, well, then you've got supply and demand fundamentals at work. The IEA suggested that two wild cards dominate the 2023 oil market outlook, Russia and China. While China's oil demand is set to rise, the future's uh, the future of Russia's actions is unknown. The world energy could center largely around whether Russia calls an end to the war in Ukraine and if more countries around the globe, including China, decide to continue importing Russian crude. Very important stuff. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with Russia and the whole war and everything else. That is something that the energy markets are going to be uh, heavily reliant on. But then natural gas, this is the one for you to listen to, especially if you're in Europe, but it, of course it does affect the US. When it comes to natural gas, Europe may not have to worry too much about increased demand from China. Beijing's energy policy, which seeks to increase pipeline imports, use more coal and boost domestic gas production, is expected to suppress China's demand for natural gas in 2023. This could help Europe maintain limited gas supply to battle the cold next winter. We don't know what's going to happen there. What I wanted to highlight was the fact that you are seeing China 
basically pulling a lot. I did a video maybe a couple weeks ago specifically about this issue. And for a lot of people, they are not aware that China is just pulling more and more of the resources that were going to Europe. So this is a problem that we'll start to see over the summertime. Subscribe to the channel if you want to know what happens with China and Europe and the prices that are accelerating. You've got to stay on top of this because that's going to have an impact on the prices. Are they going to use more coal? Yeah, absolutely. They'll use more coal. We saw them using a lot of coal, but it depends on what occurs in the near future. Let me show you this. China's recovery is still uneven with industrial sector lagging. I told you, you asked and I delivered what's going to happen in China as they reopen. Here it is. Okay. You watch this video. Let me break it down for you right here. Don't go anywhere. Services activities rebounded sharply after the holiday ended. Home and car sales fell while exports may continue to weaken. In the next section here, I'll give you a couple examples of the companies that are being looked at today. So you got to stay tuned. China's economy rebounded in February after the long holiday, although early indicators point to an uneven recovery with strong consumption following the scrapping of all the lockdowns and so on, but lagging industrial activity. I don't know if that is necessarily going to be the case going forward. Uh, but what the problem here is that if other countries around the world, Europe, and let's just say European countries, or maybe it's the US, they're saying we don't need as much from you because we did buy a lot in 2020. And now we don't need that much anymore. There's not so much demand from our consumers that has an impact on China, less activity at the ports. And of course, less activity going on um, in, in general with the warehouses and uh, fulfillment and production in general, like actually producing the stuff. Raw materials get affected by that as well. So they just show you some charts and stuff uh, throughout here. But you could see what, what we'll note here is the traffic levels drop in China, but remain elevated. This is a good indicator. It tells you what's moving, what's not. And that just gives us a look at the traffic levels dropping. Um, congestion levels in the 15 cities is, you know, at this point, we're sort of averaging out. This goes back a little bit. We went away from the, you know, the lockdowns. We went away from all of the, you know, the holiday and so on. But here we are. That's what I want to show you as it relates to that. China's lithium industry is reeling as its top a uh, production hub responsible for around a tenth of the world's supply faces sweeping closures amid a government probe of environmental infringements. We will see how this actually impacts the industry as a whole. But for a lot of people today, um, they are not going to understand the depths of this. We've got to look at it a little bit further. We've got to see what happens in the coming days, weeks and months. But of course, if there is a disruption, just like that happened in the financial industry in China, just like what we saw with the tech industry in China, if this is the next thing, we got a big problem. If this is just a one off, okay, it's a couple of weeks and we move on, no disruptions. We'll see what happens here. I'll bring you some updates. Stay tuned for that. Next section, I want to show you. The rally in China's technology stocks is fading fast. Alibaba tops the losses in the Golden Dragon Index despite profit beat. So the company did well, hey, but it's not how it works because speculation is above all else when it comes to the stock market. Funds are worried about geopolitical tensions and of course the growth outlook. Well, I'll show you the charts that they have over here. This is basically the tech stocks and you could see that they had peaked out uh, right around when China was going on vacation and you could look at that. It is a simple matter of fact. I quoted this. I talked about this, how they were unable to see a rise beyond where they were before. There was a 20% decline twice in a row, 20% decline. Stocks came down and then they rebounded off 20% as if that's a magic number. As soon as they hit 20%, that rebounds up and the stock started to come upward. But then you looked at it on like a technical analysis level and things weren't looking so good. That's what I brought to you in a previous video. And I'm just showing you an update on that. They have declined quite considerably when you see that. What's happening in addition to that is you have Apple suppliers are racing to exit China, according to the AirPods maker. So uh, Gore Tech 
invests $280 million in a northern Vietnam plant. Good stuff to always diversify. You want to have that. It's going to take a long time. They're going to Vietnam. They're going to India. Look for these two countries to see a lot of the benefits when it comes to the technology and, of course, to the assembly itself, that that's going to be pulled away from China. China's growth will still be there. Manufacturing will still be there. But a lot of that growth uh, that we saw in, let's say, like the mid-2000s and so on, that probably won't be there when we look at it uh, in the coming years. So pay attention to that. A lot of opportunity for different stocks, different companies. China hot pot chain surges 20% as the lockdown cost cuts bear fruit. This is just one particular company that they're referring to. Uh, but basically what they're saying is, that the reason I mentioned this is, some companies, they're uh, actually benefiting right now because the lockdowns are uh, off. You're not seeing that anymore. The restrictions are going away. As a result of this, people are going out, they're spending money, and they're, you know, that's one indication. This is specifically about uh, that company and so on. You could see the charts, but I just really just wanted to highlight the fact that this is about China's reopening, as they say in the bottom paragraph. Stores reopened. We, we need to look at that data as it comes out, but that's the key, okay? So some companies are going to benefit. If you're an investor, pay attention to that. And then the last thing is just a simple matter of what's happening with the geopolitical tensions. You could see this is talking uh, with the CIA. What they said, we're confident that the Chinese leadership is considering the provision of lethal equipment to Russia. How they know that, nobody really knows. But anyway, this is what they're saying. Pay attention to this because those geopolitical tensions will have an impact on oil prices, will have an impact on commodities. Uh, in general, and a lot of different aspects here in the stock market as well. China refuses to condemn Russia's Ukraine invasion during the G20 deadlock. They basically said, nope, we're not going to do that. They're kind of sitting back. They're staying neutral to that in that respect. Supposedly, they haven't given any uh, you know, ammunition, weapons, artillery, none of that sort to Russia, but they've certainly been more on the side of Russia, and that has angered the West because... Uh, they want to make sure that China plays along. This is from a few days ago, but I thought it was uh, important to include. China fighter jet confronts the U.S. Navy plane with CNN crew aboard as tensions simmer in the South China Sea. That's really what this is all about. Watch the Ukraine situation, but pay more attention to China's response to it because this is another Taiwan situation that we're going to see, I believe, in the coming days, weeks, and months. That's going to pick up. We're going to hear a lot more about that. That's what this video was all about. We're talking about the issue with lithium. Why? Every single device today seems to have a battery in it. There's lithium right there and in other products, of course. You've got the U.S. economy being directly impacted by what's happening with China as it relates to you know, imports and exports. Look at the tensions as well. And then, of course, Europe with natural gas and other resources. China is the one to pay attention to. That's why I bring it to you as regularly as possible. I hope you appreciate this information. This is the news before it hits the mainstream. So I do appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.